Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveryBands.com, and I'm here with Saturday Night Shockers. How you doing today? What's up? How y'all doing? Doing all right, doing all right. How you doing? Doing good. Good to have you. And you want to give us a little history about the band? We started uh, October 31st, 2003. First show was on a Halloween night out in the boonies, bonfires burning bright, and um, you know we've been doing it ever since. That's an epic way to start. Halloween night? Earth night. <laughs> so now you have a new uh, video out uh, called Bless Me. You want to tell us a little about that? Um, what was, we, we went on a little hiatus uh, for a while. And we came back 2018. And since we came back, that's our, our second release so far. Uh, the song is uh, very much a, a uh, anthem song for, you know, any outsiders, uh, outcasts, um, just anybody that at one time or another hasn't fit in due to any type of oppression, discrimination, um, you know, things of that nature. And it's real deep, man. I mean, it's uh, something that I think I know all of us have kind of felt that just being a little bit different out of the norm. But uh, it speaks to, you know, everything from just subculture to, you um, you know, being true to yourself, uh, you know, and, and just speaks out against any type of racism and discrimination and, um, you know, homophobia and anything like that. It's uh, something, it's very universal that everybody can identify with. Allusions to the the Salem witch trials, which were in in it of themselves, you know, in an uh, oppressive, oppressive time in history. Uh, and so with that, we kind of used uh, the craft as an inspiration for the the visuals uh, within the, the the film and the video that a lot of uh, a lot of uh, cast members well all the cast members were local from here in San Antonio and did did an awesome job in recreating the the imagery and uh, just the energy that was um, that came forth with it so props to everybody that was involved with that yeah, it's a great video. Thank you. How do you think the hiatus helped the band? It was like we were in our coffins for a long time, and like true vampires, man, we long, man. came back to life, hitting it full force, man. It it was it was a really uh, a really a good feeling getting back on stage with all the guys that are in the lineup right now. We've been through different lineups, but uh, the the lineup right now. Uh, the guys are like brothers, man. And uh, like I said, it was like an awakening. It was like an awakening. Now, what horror movies have influenced you guys? What's the first one that comes to mind, man? Vampires, Lost Boys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of, you know, shock rock fans, like Marilyn Manson, Rob Zombie, and stuff. How would you know if you uh, compare different style? You want to answer that one, Steve? We had a good answer uh, to that one a while back. And we had, we had that. Uh, I'm sorry, I was plugging my phone in. What was the question again? How, how do we compare different to other bands like, like like Rob Zombie and Marilyn Manson? How, how would you say that we're different with... with I mean, it, it, it all... In my opinion, it all fits into the same, same thing. Uh, but you know, you can pick and choose little things. Uh, they're more shock rock and stuff. Um, I enjoy that. I love horror movies and stuff like that. It's just um, musically, it's different. We're more rock and roll, I guess. Um, but I don't see it uh, being that far removed from each other. We all have the same, like, aesthetic, um, you know, stuff like that, so. Cool. Now that you guys are back in action, what do you guys have plans for the future of the band? Looking at, uh, releasing, a at minimum, a four-song EP, four to six songs, um, we, we just released, like I said, Blessed Be was the most recent release, and prior to that, we had Something Wicked, here she comes, both of them accompanied by music videos, but uh, want to do um, more more music. And, and with each EP released, 
uh, we have a goal of putting a video out uh, with each EP. So like, kind of like that number one song, the, the hit within that EP, bringing a video, uh, bringing it to life visually. Yeah, we got a bunch of demos that we have that we can work off of. So I, I guess during uh, this time that we're in quarantine, I mean, what else are we going to do, right? So start releasing that, you know, um, start making more hits, shit, you know? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. How are you handling and dealing with this quarantine time? I think it's awesome. <laughs> 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 there is a lot more time to of course uh, make things happen uh, and, and you know all of us being musicians it's kind of the blessing because it's uh you're in a isolated state and then you know once we get back together even using platforms like like uh, Skype or Zoom or anything to uh, just have that personal connection right now that the shelter in place um, mode, but uh, you know, yesterday was kind of our first time getting to see each other's faces for a while, and it's uh, it's, it's a good feeling, man. We you know we miss we're, we're social beings and we miss the interaction, but at I the same time, I Josh in a while, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can't. <laughs> I've been busy. It's been fucking crazy and stressful. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen you guys in a while. Yeah. It's good to see everybody for sure. Yeah. And if this is the only way that we get to do it, then, you know, so be it. We got to do yeah. that. Huh? It's great that we can all stay connected like this with the technology. Yeah. And even though we're, you know, locked inside, we can still connect and talk to each other and bring content to the world. So it's yeah. really good. Now, when this is all over and this passes, do you have any shows that uh, tours or shows in mind? We, we had a show scheduled with Blitz Kid uh, in April, and I think that got pushed to um, October, October, November. October? October. October. Yeah. I don't know the, the specific date, but um, I know it's in October. So that, that was something that we were glad to see that they didn't just kind of... Uh, and we had heard that they were planning on uh, schedule, rescheduling that. We, we were also a part of uh, Nosferat Tour, which was going to be... Um, uh, in part with uh, Stellar Corpses and Just Another Monster. And so we're looking to see where that goes. That was going to be um, primarily we were going to hit the Texas piece of it, all the major cities in Texas. And so we definitely want to get uh, outside of the, the local region. And then, uh, um, you know, once everything clears up, hopefully uh, we can you know, spread our, our bat wings and get outside of the states and into some of the. Uh, international territories. Cool. Now, do you guys try and plan special shows on Halloween too? Oh, for sure. October, October is our month, man. <laughs> we, I think this last October we were playing. We played was, quite well. It was uh, a couple of shows. And that was that was a matter of fact during the same season when when we came back in 2018. Uh, um, with our reunion show and it just felt so good you know all the guys uh we just agreed that hey, let's keep it moving keep it going awesome now if people want to find you online look you up how do they do that uh, we're we're everywhere on spotify like definitely youtube that's where we're going to be releasing those those videos the two videos that we already have right now with uh them being something wicked here she comes and blessed be and in addition to that we're on itunes spotify Pandora, um, Google Play, you know, all the major, major platforms. I want to say there's about 16 of them that we're on uh, with the support of DistroKid, which, which is putting our music out there. We're on SoundCloud, uh, you name it. So, I mean, um, it's all out there. Cool. And then you got some new music coming, so that's cool, too. For sure. And now the name of the band, how did you guys come up with that? What's that? The name of the band. How did you guys come up oh, with that? Saturday yeah. Night Shockers. Uh, Saturday Night Shockers. N I T E night. Um, there was a uh, a broadcasted show uh, locally in here in San Antonio that would uh, air every Saturday night, and they would show like horror movies. So that would be like um, the theme of it would be okay horror movie night. And it'd be the Saturday Night Shocker, ooh, you know, 
And uh, me and Chuck, I don't know. I don't know. We were just brainstorming one day, and we're like, "Hey, that sound." It was the whole. I think at that time too, like a lot of the horror punk bands, psychedelic bands, the three word, you know, da da da, and it that kind of just fit. We're like, "Hey, let's use that." We had what were our other names that we remains, like, the remains, and the the dead beats. It's something that it they just didn't sound. They didn't sound so right. Shit. They didn't sound right at all. And, and like Pat said, Saturday Night Shock it just had a nice ring to it. And so yeah. all we did is just change that middle word N I T E. A lot of people sometimes, uh, and I think that's help that that's helpful for Google searches too. Um, instead of just Saturday Night, you'll see Saturday Night Fever pop up if you put in. But yeah, definitely uh, from the, the realm of horror. And that's what a lot of our music, I mean, all of, we, we started out as a horror punk band. Um, you know, we, a lot of us are familiar with uh, the Misfits, uh, you know, the originated by, by Glenn Danzig. And so we, we used to cover a lot of that music initially when we first picked up our instruments and some of the easier punk sounds. And we've, we've evolved since then. I think that's the other piece in coming together since 2018. All, all of us, all the members have evolved musically and continue to refine their crafts and you know uh, there's a different sound if you listen to the stuff that's on youtube that that e that even isn't on our channel but has been uploaded by fans or um or, or what have you it's it's a different sound and so that, i think that's the other yeah. thing coming coming out of the car it was that horror punk formula that you know just that four chord progression three chord progression uh simple beat but I mean, it worked. Like, look at the misfits, you know. And now it's now we're just like we evolved so much. We evolved, and it's just uh, bringing everybody's kind of uh, tastes into the music. We have five of us, so yeah. That that's the other thing that musically we we collaborate a lot better now. Uh, whereas in the past it was uh, you know one or two of us just kind of pumping out the the music. Now the the writing process is more collaborative to where everybody can bring their their piece and um, it's, it's more fulfilling i think like that for yeah, it, it'll start off as a demo and then we all get in one room five dudes just you know listening to it and kind of okay you know this sounds good this sounds good and take this out get into some arguments <laughs> the good uh you know constructive criticism and stuff like that but all the the songs that we had as the band so far, I'm totally happy with it. The direction that we're going uh, in this whole like um, revival of SNS for sure. And where would you like to see the band end up? Shit, back on stage, man. <laughs> Just you playing know, shows, uh, shows. Playing shows. Playing shows, different states. Yeah, we miss playing live. And global. To answer yeah. that question, we want to take this global. Vamp vampires invading Germany, Japan, um, you know, all, all of Europe, all of Asia, and all of South America, and going up into Canada. And we got our passports. That was one of the things when we got back together. You know, we had uh, only played primarily West Coast in the United States and in Mexico. And so when we got back together, we were like, "Hey, let's let's ride this full force, man. Let's go, no, no limit. Let's let's push this. Go so global. I mean, that, that's for all, all of us. We don't got to be on MTV or none, no mess like that. But just to be, um, you know, to be able to share that music globally, not only online but but in person with, you know, and kind of feel the energy from different cultures and play with other bands uh, that are within the same genre and." that uh, got that same vibe, it's where, where I see us going. What are some artists and bands you'd like to tour with? Well, like I said, already we got we got the setup with uh, Stellar Corpses and Just Another Monster, so that's just, you know, we're waiting until all this mess um, uh, dissipates, but uh, aside from that, you know, Michael Graves, um, you know, some of the, the horror, horror rock, horror punk icons, um, I mean, the other guys want to chime in, like who who do y'all want to who do y'all hey, see? I heard, I heard Danzig is 
doing something with the Misfits again, recording another album. That would be, be the shit. Right there. Yeah, you know, but who knows? That's dancing. <laughs> well, hopefully this interview reaches them in years that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Wait, um, who else? Um, maybe Wednesday 13. I think we've, uh, I think Steve knows some of the dudes from Wednesday 13 that try to reach out to you. Um, definitely bands along the lines that, of what we're doing, you know. Yeah, I have a feeling when this is all over, there's going to be a lot of tours, a lot of music. It's going to be a big end of the year whenever this is over. Yeah, and I hope it's sooner than later. Yes. I'm, I'm hearing like 2021, and I'm like, no. <laughs> like fall 2021, I'm like, oh, God. But yeah. either way, we'll have a lot of material to play if we, <laughs> if that happens to be the case. And are you still going to be playing your older material too, from back in the day? We we do every so often. We we try with the newer stuff. We try to keep that uh, kind of push that just because that's more that's more polished. And in, in our opinions, we're a little bit more happy with with those. But you know, for some of those old schoolers, when we play some of the the older places, um, you know, in, in the United States here, uh, when we play some of those places, somebody will call out, "Play this song!" and you know, we already have that ready in our back pocket, ready to go, because we know somebody's going to ask us to play one of the older songs. So every so often we, we do that, and um, they, they'll get into it. Some of the older stuff's real rowdy, and the pits will break out. Uh, but it's cool to see that energy, though. So we, we always have something like that in our back pocket. Keep, keep, it, keep it fresh, but, but keep, it, uh, keep it real, too. Or have you guys thought about maybe redoing some of the older songs to make them a little more modern? Seven. There's some B sides we have. I I I have like the whole archive of demos that we did on cassette tape, man. And I I'll, I'll come across them and I'm like, dude, I think we can work with this. And it's like a B side. And few people have heard some of these B sides too, and they're like, hey, you all should do that. One. And I think we could do that too, you know some b-sides but uh, as far as like older ones i don't know what do you guys think um i, I like I'm, I'm more apt to doing stuff that was not released as opposed to kind of trying to, to remix it in, in the sense just, just because the uh, you know time time's valuable and so you know the more that we can hey, hey. there's cars <laughs> sorry but, uh, <laughs> moving stuff around and uh, yeah, shave, shave the beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to shave. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just kind of keeping the, the newer stuff, bringing more of the new music out. Like like uh, we were talking about earlier, we, we have a lot of it that's kind of in the ready, um, and so we'll just you know kick up the burner and and, and get it out. Uh, but but definitely anything that hasn't been released that's got potential. Uh, something that's got an older vibe to it. Um, Want to bring some more of the production techniques that we have into that. A lot of the old stuff was real raw, which was something within the time period that we were, you know, uh, in which we originated. But um, I don't know. There's just uh, listening to the stuff now. It, it, it's I like it better compared to to the older stuff. How many albums do you guys have? See, there was the the debut album, which was just self-titled SNS Saturday Night Shockers, and then uh, we had <laughs> that that one. That one was old school, man. What did we record that? We recorded that at Welders. That yeah, was like, uh, me, and, me and Pat set up the the mixer in in Pat's closet, and he played while I sat in the closet and mixed it. Old school yeah. analog. <laughs> People, and that people, people, was, people oh. really do love that album. They say it has a vintage sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It had the, the whole the needle on it. It was straight up analog mixer, man, old school. Uh, uh, had the mics plugged into that and, and everything. We even did the, the vocals, I think, in the closet. Yeah, um, we did. <laughs> it, but Dude, listen, you, we like, went so. out and bought a bass and then did bass from a pawn shop and then returned it. That day, because we didn't fucking need it. <laughs> and and but, uh, yeah, it was it was that one. Uh, then we had uh, uh, Bloody Memories. 
Yeah, uh, we recorded that all in one day too. That one in an actual studio, and that one's pretty good. Good. And then uh, after Bloody Memories, uh, we had that uh, EP released with. Uh, okay, the EP. Which that one was. Uh, the split. Bloody, the split. With, uh, what was that? Dead Steve Scott. knows that one. Who that split? Who was that split with? Dead Sky. Yeah, there you go. The Corpus, yeah. And then uh, after that, then we had one that we hadn't released uh, until we came back. It was a bunch of recordings that were just said. That one, that one's on Spotify and iTunes as well as as YouTube. But it's um, it's recordings from back in 2010 that we had. Uh, that's when our we went on hiatus in 2010. When we came back in 2018, we're like, let's let's officially release these. And so those are now on, on Spotify and, and YouTube too. That's the Live Forever. The Live Forever EP it was something that we brought back with us from the grave when we came back in 2018. And then now, like I said, we had the two singles. And so we want to come back with bringing a little bit more music. And so the, the, the four song, four to six song EP is what we're currently in the works on right now um we got those kind of we were playing around with them you know before it went crazy lockdown mode but um you know we we can still work digitally sending each other the files and keeping it moving you're ready for a two two cd box set coming out <laughs> shit done man time. sure man like we got a lot of stuff so we need to yeah. We just can't take as long as this last one. It took like seven months or something. In one one song, but yeah. uh, there was man, it was cursed. Uh, <laughs> that's, what you that, do, that's what happens when you write about witches. Yeah, yeah. But that that had to do with the video too. So we did a video for that song. We were doing like video, uh, single and video, single and video, and then if you know we didn't have the song done yet, but we had the video done. So it was kind of like okay, now we got to do the. The song and we're kind of bouncing back and um this time it's like okay we'll have the song done first and then do the video so we don't have to wait on it now you guys are also on some other different projects too so you want to talk about that uh yeah we got so me and chuck are in a like synth pop band called violetta crush totally different from shockers like nice day. <laughs> Night and day for sure. Um, then me, Chuck, and Steve have another uh, band. It's a little more darker synth stuff. Uh, that's called Shadow Fashion. And then uh, Kyer, uh, you want to tell them about what you got going on? Oh, I got some weird uh, 80s metal Judas Priest sounding Maiden mixed with typo negative sounding progressive metal band <laughs> <It's good. laughs> so uh, i don't even know what to call it it's weird stuff Very i like all that stuff in music that's that's cool yeah we, we all come from different you know backgrounds in in musical tastes and stuff like that so and, and definitely it all comes into shockers you'll hear like like that, that synth stuff we brought it into the newer shocker stuff so we sat down and wrote like synth parts for it and um yeah, it, it, it works. Well, yeah, sometimes the songs will be a like lot of the time, uh, the, the songwriting starts with a uh, one of my riffs that I do by myself, and it's disgustingly metal. And so I have to have these guys kind of Turn it down, reel, it, down. reel it back in. <laughs> Otherwise, it would just be completely too metal. So it's kind of like we, we find a nice middle ground of everyone's influences when then it comes together and it creates shockers. Because if it was just me in charge of writing, there'd be just dual guitars, nothing but solos, and just, it, it'd be and, my project, you know what I mean? So it's just like everyone has their say, and it kind of just meshes all well into this um, nice little ball that is that is Shockers. But you can definitely, like, like uh, Pat was saying, you can definitely hear um, everybody's little input to what it produces here. And it's kind of um, we were fun to, to hear what we come up with, you know? Yeah. That goes back to what we were talking about. What's different about this time is like, you know, Pat came up with the riff for Blessed Be, and then Kyra threw his metal thing on top of that. Um, you know, Kyra had uh, the idea for something wicked. And then, you know, with both songs, you know, um, uh, Josh and Steve and, and 
myself. We'll, we'll put our, our pieces into the mix. There's another one that I've got that, that I wrote called, um, um, I don't even know the title that we have for it yet, but it's, it's an allusion to Edgar Allan, to Edgar Allan Poe, uh, the Telltale Heart. So um, that's like what Kyra was saying, what's nice about this new um, collaborative um, format is that all of us are you know, adding pieces to the pie so that it's truly uh, a band uh, creation as opposed to just one, one or two guys creating stuff. And it makes things run quicker too, because you know, if, if Kyra's got about three or four riffs ready to go, Pat's got some riffs. Um, you know, Josh can, uh, and Steve can add some things to it too, and you know, all of us is going to make yep. the writing process go a lot. The thing is too is like we all play guitar too, so it's like, um, Josh, do you play guitar? A little bit here and there, but uh, <laughs> more or less just practice a lot more drums and shit. Yeah. Uh, so we all yeah. play guitar, so it's like anybody yeah. bring riff and and you know yeah. see where it goes. I mean, just humming a humming a tune, you know, like yeah. hey, try this, do this. I know Josh has done that when we're sitting there and we're like, hey, check this out for a breakdown and da 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 da, you know, when we do it. So I think it works well as a band. Yeah, it's cool when all the band members, you know, know how to play all the different instruments. And I've seen bands on switch up on stage, who drums, who guitars, who sing, and it adds a, more of an element to it. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. And that, not every song ends up sounding the same, too. That's the other thing. If you listen to a lot of the old shockers, like some of the uh, some of the songs, they all have because they're written by the same person. And so when you, when you really, truly mix it, you get a, a real good, good vibe and some um, some variety in it. Well, it was good having you guys and talking with you guys and everyone look that up. Never grow old. Cheers, man. Bye. Blessed be. Thank you guys.